All right, so let's talk about this number for gross domestic product. Okay, so gross domestic product is this one number that we're going to use to be able to measure whether we're experiencing economic growth in an economy. Well, what is gross domestic product? Gross domestic product is the economic indicator used to measure economic growth in an economy as the sum of the money value of all products produced in a period of time. Now here's what I want to remind you. We already have a word for all of the products produced in a period of time. And that word is output. So really, a better definition or another definition for gross domestic product could be the economic indicator used to measure economic growth in an economy as the sum of the money value of, whoops, of all output. Okay, so we're coming up with a money number, a dollar value, which is going to represent gross domestic product. But just because we have a definition for GDP and it's supposed to be a money value, we still don't know where this dollar value comes from. How are we going to come up with this one dollar value that represents all of the millions upon millions of products that are produced in the United States in one year. Okay, so how do we come up with this money value? All right, how do we come up with what I would call a concrete money value? How are we going to come up with this number? Well, there's actually a few ways that we do this uh, in economics. This is, there's a few ways. Now, we in this class, in this principles class, we're only going to focus on two of them. We're going, to, we're going to discuss two of them, but then we're only going to use one of them. We're going to pick one of them that we're going to use uh, throughout the course of this, of this class. Okay? All right, so the two methods that we're going to use, one of them is called the income method. So let's put here the income method. And the other one is called the expenditure method. And both of these, income is represented in dollars, right? Okay, well, I mean, I hope you have an income. Hopefully your income is represented in dollars. Um, I mean, I guess you could get paid in bananas and um, cell phone service, I suppose. But, you know, hopefully you actually get paid in dollars, uh, and that's, that's an income. Also, expenditures represented in dollars. When you go buy something at the store, the price tag has a dollar amount on it. And when you spend money, that is called expenditure. And to help you understand this income method and this expenditure method, I'm going to give you an example of production, a very, very tiny, small example of production in an economy. It's a story about five individuals. So. Here's what we've got in this situation. We have a lumberjack. You know, lumberjacks, they chop down trees, right? So we've got a lumberjack, and then we've got a miller. Well, millers, there's different kinds of millers. A miller, uh, in this case, we're going to be talking about wood. A miller will take uh, trees that are cut down by lumberjacks, and they will basically grind them down, and they'll turn the trees into usable lumber. Okay, So lumberjacks chop down trees and, and, and felled trees are often called timber. Millers, when they mill the timber, the product that they then sell is called lumber. Okay, And lumber is often purchased by a carpenter a carpenter is a woodworker, somebody who takes wood and makes something out of the wood. 
and then the carpenter would produce some kind of product. In this case, the carpenter is going to produce a chair. Okay? And then uh, we have a shop owner or a store owner. Store owner. And when the store owner purchases the chair, the store owner calls that inventory. Okay, so the stuff that is in the store that the store owner is trying to sell is called inventory. And then people who go to stores and buy things, they're called consumers. So we're going to put consumer here. So that's a person, a person who wants to buy something. So here's what happens. Here's our story. The lumberjack cuts down a tree and sells the timber to the miller. And the miller gives the lumberjack $2 for the tree. Okay. Then the miller takes the timber and, and cuts it up into usable wood. He, he cuts up the, the tree into wood. He cuts it up into lumber. And the carpenter goes to the miller and buys lumber from the miller. Okay? And the carpenter pays $7 for all the lumber that came from the tree, the timber that was cut down by the lumberjack. And so now the carpenter takes the lumber and makes a chair and then sells the chair to the owner of the store. And the store owner gives the carpenter $20 for the chair. The chair now goes into the inventory in the store and eventually a consumer comes in, they see the chair, they want to buy the chair and they give the store owner $35. Okay. Now along the way here's what happened. The timber basically has a value of $2, okay? Because the lumberjack chopped down the tree and then the miller paid the lumberjack $2, right? But now as we move on here, as the timber turns into lumber, okay? How much did the miller really earn? The miller did not earn uh, seven dollars, even though the carpenter gave the miller seven dollars, we have to remember that the miller first had to pay two dollars for the timber. Okay, so we don't include the two dollars that he had to pay out in what he sold the lumber for. So the carpenter gave the miller seven dollars, but we have to subtract the miller's costs, and the miller paid out two dollars. So we have to do seven dollars minus two dollars. So really, really, the miller only earned $5 on the lumber. Now, moving on, the same thing is going to happen with the carpenter. Even though the store owner gave the carpenter $20, the carpenter first had to pay $7 out to the miller to get the lumber. And so, as the lumber becomes a chair, the carpenter actually only earned $13. Okay, that's a, that's a terrible looking dollar sign. There we go. So we had to do 20 minus 7 for the carpenter. So really the carpenter only earned, in reality, uh, his earnings were only $13, not $20. Same thing with the store owner. Even though the consumer is giving the store owner $35 to buy the chair, the store owner first had to pay the carpenter $20 to be able to get the chair in the first place. And so that inventory only earned that store owner 35 minus 20, which is $15. Okay. So what we're looking at here is, there's two ways of looking at this. If we look at it by the income method, what we would do is we would add up the value of all of this production based on how much everybody got paid for producing. So that's the income method. How much everybody got paid in, well, how much each, how much all parties got paid as they were involved in the production process. 
Okay, so two dollars. The lumberjack got paid two dollars. Uh, the miller got paid five dollars. That was the miller's income, so that's seven total. The carpenter got thirteen dollars, so seven plus thirteen is twenty, and the store owner got paid fifteen dollars for a total of thirty-five dollars. The expenditure method basically just goes all the way to the end and says, well, how much is the final user paying to buy the thing? And the consumer is paying $35 to buy the chair. And so the expenditure method goes by just asking, well, how much did the consumer pay? And the income method says, how much were all those involved in production get paid along the way? And the thing is that both of those numbers are equal to each other. Let's move this. I don't want you to think that means negative, okay? Income is going to be equal to expenditure because the consumer bought the chair for $35 and everybody was paid a total of $35 in the production process. And so these are both different ways that come up with the same number because GDP shouldn't be different based on its different method. We should have all of our methods should come up with the same number and that's exactly what we have here. Now, there are errors in the calculation of GDP. It is not a perfect process. We are calculating millions of products and trillions of dollars. So there are definitely inaccuracies, okay? But this, what I'm basically showing you here is uh, we have the income method and the expenditure method. In this class, we are going to focus on the expenditure method. And the expenditure method, we call it total expenditures. Total expenditure. And it is basically just the final price, the final price of a product. And now we're going to talk about total expenditure.